our good old friend, the midsummer heat wave has arrived, so it's time for a quick update on what that might entail, and if this is unusual or something a little bit more typical for a heat wave in our area. So the National Weather Service watches and warnings and also the catalyst for me making this video is that the northern and central Willamette Valley is under an excessive heat warning until at a minimum Thursday. And that's in addition to the gorge in east of the Cascades being under a similar excessive heat warning. Also, the Cascades under about 4,000 feet west of there, except for the coast, is also under a heat advisory for the same period of time. So the setup for this heat wave, and it's very basic, it's just quite simply a high pressure system. Come on, mouse, where are you? High pressure system is situated in northern British Columbia. This map's not great in showing that. And because of where it's positioned and the fact that there's no other thermal lows, as so-called, in the area, we're not going to be experiencing a lot of east winds, so that will thankfully not bring temperatures up to the extreme levels that they were last June, but I'm still expecting triple digits at a minimum one day, more likely two or three days. Now, even though there's not going to be a lot of winds at the surface, there will still be winds in the upper atmosphere, and there are some fires burning in California, so I would not be surprised in an anticipating some smoke to be blowing up from California into the Willamette Valley. I don't see this affecting air quality, and this is mainly going to be south of Salem for the most part, but it could lower the temperatures by a couple of degrees, assuming that happens. So, next question is, is this unusual? And the answer is, no, 100 degrees on average happens about once a year. Of course, an average means some years it doesn't happen at all. Other years, it could be two times, maybe even three times a year. Despite the length, I am not anticipating any length of heat weight record records broken and only one daily record I'm expecting to be broken for Portland. For context, Five of the seven days in my seven-day forecast have it at 90 degrees or higher in both Portland and Corvallis slash the South Valley. Main aspects, not extreme. It's not going to be 116 degrees like it was last year, but just a lot longer in terms of number of 90-degree days when compared to last year. That being said, it is still very dangerous to be outside for extended periods of time between I would say about 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. just based off of how hot the temperatures are going to be. And also, even though it's warmer at 7.30 than it is at 11.30, it'll feel a lot warmer at 11.30. And you're also going to get dehydrated a little bit quicker because the sun angle is a lot higher than it is at 7.30. Like I mentioned on the map, some smoke higher up, mainly I would say from Wednesday through Friday south of Salem. Again, I don't see an air quality concern, not even if you're going to the Cascades. It should be high enough even for that. Should reduce the high temperature, so I'd say 3 to 5 degrees. And then if you want to escape the heat for, if you have time... The highs will be much colder at the coast, anywhere from about 55 to 80 degrees, depending on how close you are to the ocean proper. It'll be warmer in the north coast than it will be at Newport. And highs anywhere from about 80 to 90 degrees at 4,000 feet in the Cascades. Colder as you go up, warmer as you go down. So on to the seven-day forecast. And like I mentioned, only one day tomorrow that I'm expecting a daily high record to be broken, 102 degrees for Portland. I should note that that's not, even, that's not in the top 10 warmest July days. Also strengthening that this is not that unusual for this time of year. This is the warmest two weeks of the year, the last week of July, first week of August. So seeing a heat wave is almost expected this time of year. Low of 70 degrees. So for those who are in the 
Portland City proper without air conditioning, it's going to be a pretty warm night. That temperature will be probably closer to the lower to mid-60s in the outlying areas, though. Another 100-degree day I'm expecting on Wednesday before staying in the upper 90s Thursday and Friday. Possible smoke on Thursday. I don't think it'll reach Portland, though. And then starting to cool off Saturday into Sunday and Monday with highs going back into the 80s on Sunday. Now for Corvallis, very similar tomorrow. I think temperatures are going to be in that same ballpark range of 100 to 103. I like 101 for Corvallis myself. But because of the smoke coming up, I think that's going to knock a couple of degrees off for Wednesday and Thursday, keeping highs actually in the mid-90s rather than the upper 90s. Likely not filtering out Friday, but it should start to filter out. I don't think it'll filter out in time for temperatures to creep back up above the mid 90s. So I have 95 for Friday and then cooling off similar to Portland and then starting to match Portland's temperatures again as we go into early next week. And due to the more rural nature of Corvallis and Eugene, this would apply to you as well. The low temperatures will be far more reasonable being in the upper 50s or maybe in the low 60s in the most extreme case. This is going to be my only video on this because this happens to be midterm week as I am taking summer classes in college right now. So please stay safe out there, stay cool out there, and take care.